girls wait for me. I love to dance. I'm Gino, and this is my favorite show with my favorite guy. Let's welcome your host, Matt McCourt. Hi, and welcome to Tell Me About It. I'm Matt McCourt, and tonight we have Alex Marquez and Gene from the band Anger. So, hi, how are you guys doing? So man. Doing pretty good, man. It's a pleasure and an honor to be on with you here, man. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. A lot of people, <laughs> I stand here and turn into a skeleton. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't do it tonight. <laughs> oh, come on, man. That's a, this is an honor for me, a true honor. I've been a wild dog fan all my life. Oh, man. That band wasn't really supposed to be a band, actually. We just got together because the guitar player's girlfriend's Little sister was in a recording class, and they needed a band to uh, practice on. And I had gotten a hold of Pete Holmes from Black and Blue. Well, not by actually Mick Zane from that was in Malice later. He said, "Hey, he will call me Hawk because I got my hair burned off when I was seventeen. Hey, Hawk, you can come over and play bass with us." And I had to get all these gigs. I had these gigs for the Ravers. That was my first album in nineteen eighty one. New Way Band. And it was produced by the guy that ended up being the uh, vice president of Universal. Not, uh, I learned all my publicity from him. In fact, he offered, he, offered, he offered me a job in publicity. What was the name of the band again? The Ravers. Is it, I'm going to try to find it. Yeah, it's on iTunes and on YouTube. And oh, Okay, cool. That I, got, that I can get it for sure. Kind of like, you know, when I was wanting to be a pop star. <laughs> oh yeah, well, we all go through that. I was just too fat and ugly. Because I was totally into punk rock before this. I played in a band with Mick, and we did Old Judas Priest and Budgie and Rush, and then I got it way into um, New Wave and Early Punk with uh, Tom Pig from Poison Idea. I taught him how to oh, play guitar. I love Poison Idea. So you might actually like Anger. I, I taught Tom how to play guitar. He was slinging coke, and he got all these t- guitars and amps. You know, people so, uh, would drop him, trade him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd say, you should play those. He goes, no, that's too hard. He goes, you, you're smart. You can play them. So I, I wrote out some chord things and showed him, and he took off on his own. I produced the first EP, Pick Your King. Oh, wow. That's awesome, man. And I loaned them. I loaned you get, them. You get credits on the show, right? Yeah. And, uh, then uh, <laughs> I was me and Tom were good friends when he was small. <laughs> I watched him. <laughs> we went to a, we bought tickets for a Ramones concert, and we were both our birthday was like a couple of days apart, and uh, yeah. it was November. So we got the tickets like in September. Waited for three hours outside this club. Thought it was an all ages show. We get up there, we got to see some ID. And let's uh, hand them, we hand them our ID. Because you guys aren't 21. You can't come in. So Tom goes, let's go back to your house and call the bomb threat in. Oh, Jesus Christ. So we did. <laughs> and that's in the Poison Idea documentary. I tell the story and so does Tom. I got to watch this. That's awesome. He bought a yeah, uh, he bought an Iceman. Uh, I mean, his Iceman guitar because I had. Yeah, the Paul, the, I always call that thing the Paul Stanley guitar. He cut the horn off his. Oh, Because <laughs> I, I I had a '62 Jazz bass. I cut the horn off mine. Ugh, that thing would be worth you know a car now, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, I remember mean, you did what you loved and you wanted to do it. What the hell? But, but Wild Dogs, we weren't supposed to be a band. We we're just going to record some shit. And I'd already had a record deal. And I saw Mike Barney on TV, on MTV once with uh, Daisy Jackson. He said, hey, You got a band with a good guitar player. Send us, send this guy your tape. So I did. And we sent him a tape with one of 
Jeff Hortons, the guitar player from Wild Dogs, says he's got an extensive porno collection, and he cut out some picture of some weird people in latex, and we sent that, and Mike called us the next day. Cool. He said I what, too sounded too Negro esque <laughs> by singing. Like, oh my god! Well, no, you did not. Oh, this just sounded. You, you just, sound great. Are you kidding me? I love your voice. It was like Johnny Winter, but you know, my great 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 grandmother was black. I got a whole black family in New York. That's so weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, me too. So do I. I'm black in all the wrong places. I had an Afro. I had, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, it my work out too well for my people came from Ireland, and the people that uh, they didn't make any money, and so you're up with a black woman. It's very common. And yeah. well, there's a lot of black people in Ireland. <laughs> no, we wow. here when they got to New York. Oh, he's, oh he's, I see. Yes. Anyway, we're really here to talk about anger and your band yeah. and getting back together, and you got a new album out. What's the album called? The album. It's not done yet. It's being, it's being mixed and mastered. The album's called Tenacity, which is pretty much what I can describe the fact of doing this again, because this is like four, 30, some odd years later. We all meet up, we have a drink, and we decide to do it. And wow. it's coming out really good. Good. So um, one of the things, I, you know, we've been friends for a long time on Facebook, but I yeah. really, I don't really know too much about you. I know you're friends with, wow. his name's Breed, but I, I can't even remember. Oh, yeah, Breed, Ruben, Ruben, his real name's Ruben. Yeah. <laughs> That's my brother. But uh, yeah, man, we've been friends for a long time. We just never really, we talked about life things. We didn't really talk about much music. Yeah. Unless I was asking you about the wild dog. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm here. We're, here. We're crashing. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's planes fun. in America lately. The the wheels have been falling off. The doors have been falling off. Uh, I'll take my yeah. private plane or just stay here. <laughs> I'll ride a bus, man. But, the hell with that. God, Dean's got a good journey. They got a private plane. Man, I'm so glad he's back in that band. Neil Sean's a, is, is Neil Sean an ale or not? A what? Is Neil Sean an ass or is that all oh, about Fuck no. Neil Sean is a sweetheart. He's a I hung out with him when he was in Hardline and he, he was a he was a, he was a really great guy. He kept saying, you know, I hate these meet and greets because it's all radio people and record store people and I really would like to talk to the fans. And wow, you see? He's see, that kind he gets of guy. A bad rep. He gets such a bad rep. And it's all, and I said, dude, he's one of my favorite guitar players. So. Uh, he's a good guy. And of course, you know, I'm going to get into this. It was, it was uh, unavoidable. The man, because he's top five for me. Me and Dean, I wasn't playing with that guy. Who? With Dean? Dean. Oh, Dean, man. This is a story. I'm, you know, Jay Reynolds from Malice was living in. the I love. Was in, it was in, living in this basement that I'm in right now. And me and him, my friend Kip Dorn in my band Evil Genius and James and Dean did the first demos that got them onto the Metal Blade, Metal Massacre 2 album. So we played on the first Malice demos and we, we found him, uh, Kip found him at a club in Portland, there's like six people there. He said, nobody's here, but this guy's amazing. You got to see him. And it was on his... 17th birthday and we went down became I became good friends right then with him and so we recorded the Malice thing about a week later we kept in you know in touch and then he said cool. hey man can I come over and, and jam I want to try out for Wild Dogs because Pete Holmes was our drummer from Black and Blue then he joined yeah. he joined Black and Blue so we got Jamie the singer who's also a great drummer and that's yeah, what okay. That's on, he's on half the first album in Dean's you mean Jamie's and Dean's album. Jamie said James, right? Yes. And uh, <laughs> I told the story every time I've done an interview. He comes <laughs> over. <laughs> he comes over and, and Jamie's got this pristine Ludwig kit. The heads weren't even dented, you know, symbols were perfect. Dean plays five songs. He cracked every symbol. He broke. Broke, you remember ghost pedals? Ghost kick pedals? 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. He broke the footboard by hitting it so oh hard. God. When he punched, I through, did that one. He punched through the bass drum, broke the drum head, broke the snare. <laughs> <laughs> and cracked every symbol and totally ruined every head. And he goes, "Well, that too is goes, why I love it. Aside from my many of the, my fills from him, there's many, there's many, there's, there's more to the story." Oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll let you he, he goes, "Hey, man, I gotta go." <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll call you. And so I go, "Well, what do you got to sing?" And the guitar player said, "Well." He's too young. He's too fat. He overplays. We can't control him. And he, he makes too many jokes. And I go, sounds perfect to me. Sounds like a drummer. Sounds like me. And so I basically forced him in the band. And the, the, the bass player was just standing there with his face in shock. Like, oh, God, now we've got to tell Jamie his drum set is in ruins. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, he's a powerhouse. He's, he's, him and Tommy Aldridge, that's why I love him. They're like two of my, Tommy's my top, but both of those guys, because they just pound, man, they destroy everything. Are you into Billy Cobham? Yeah, of course I'm into Billy Cobham. So I was to, totally into Billy Cobham, like, you know, from right when I was 14. Yeah, and Billy Cobham's old. Or before, yeah, on the Spectrum album, but I saw him with John McLaughlin, Ma Vishnu. They played in Portland with Jeff Beck on the uh, Blow by Blow tour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm really wow. in it. That's the music I really love is that kind of music and funk. And uh, yeah. that's why probably my bands haven't done too well with metal stuff because. <laughs> and Dean. You're not Dean, a metalhead. <laughs> Dean was trained by Mel Brown, who was a very famous R&B drummer. He played with, on Motown stuff. And, and um, he, Dean has an extensive jazz background. That's what why he doesn't, why nobody can play his stuff. Hey, I'm having a problem with the dog here. Go, will ya? <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, if you spray some mustard on your pants, he won't help you. He's got to get around us and this is our little, like, there, so she's always trying to run in and out of here over. And so, of course, now that we're doing this, she really wants to be bothered. My girlfriend had to take, we got this cat, the one that dances on the intro of this show. <laughs> oh, I see. The, the one that talks. He had huge balls. In the, in the interview I did with him, he goes, well, you know, I've got, I've got a sex side like you won't believe. i got huge balls. And I cut to a picture of his balls, but he got them taken off tonight or today. Oh, man. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know. yeah, we have, a, we have a, an, evil, an evil cat. He yells at the top of his lungs all night. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm a cat, man. I, my best friend, Barnaby... Was a cat. I got. We got him for a wedding present. My ex, my future, my now ex-wife, okay. and uh, that cat just stayed with me like nobody's business. When we practiced, I joined Mayhem not too long after that, and we practiced okay. in. I was an apartment manager in this ghetto place, so we practiced in an empty apartment on the first floor where I lived, and he would lay in there and while we practiced, the noise didn't bother me, him. There's tons of crank around there they made it in the apartment upstairs he was sniffing this line on the swamp i go wait barnaby and he goes <laughs> oh he was on fire boom boom boom, boom, boom. <laughs> i go, don't do that anymore yeah he he's he's lived till he is 20 man he would climb up a a, uh -huh. mar a marshall sack and just sit there he wouldn't didn't like any other amps it must smell right he climbed up the girl who would and sleep on the the head. He, he had good taste. <laughs> yeah. He had good taste. All right, so I wanted to ask you, I'm going to ask you a question now. What was your involvement with the Shrapnel label? I've never gotten that story straight. Did you A&R for them? Did you do anything for them? Well, um, no, I just fr I became friends with Mike Barney. And Mike Barney had my first album. He had put an album out called Rock Justice around the same time as the Ravers. He goes, I've got the Ravers album. It's pretty good wow. stuff. Oh, wow. And uh, so I just, I would call him up and talk to him like uh, all the time. In fact, I chalked up, remember when you had to pay for long distance? My mo I lived in Yeah, my I remember that one. Is the band going to play for this long distance? I go, I'll ask them. They wouldn't. They were 
the other guys, especially guitar player, was he was the asshole. They usually and, are. And yeah. <laughs> and they usually are. You know, like, now I got one more to forget. I forget. That's go why. ahead. What? Because it pisses me off. Because I love I'm not gonna lie to you, I like the record a lot. Why are you not in freaking Rain of Terror? That really pisses me off. Because I'm not a pretty boy. They didn't. They they said my 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 Doctor Mastermind songs. I recorded with this group because they weren't paying attention to me. They had they replaced me twice because I was too fat and too ugly, and the girls didn't like me. And they didn't see all the boys in our the males in our audience every night. They wanted to be a girl band, and oh, so. Boy. So this is well, I had, that one dude with his hairline. It was a habit. <laughs> it's like to have a nice day poster with yeah. the orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so anyway, this is what happened. They were such spineless guys. They wouldn't tell me, okay, we're going to do this. We don't want you in the band. They got this other guy, and I had this manager who worked for Journey, kind of ironic, and then he was working for Night Ranger. Night Ranger and Black and Blue played a show in Portland, and I went down there and spent the first, it was a two-night show, and I talked to him the whole day beforehand, and we tried to map out a strategy and went to the show that night, and me and Kip and my ex-wife, we had a great time. The party went Black and Blue, and um, anyway, the next night I come and the the band shows up and at the end of the night we are all by the backstage door and there's one extra guy and I'm nice, how you doing? My, I'm mad, blah, 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 blah. And we get on the bus to have a meeting with this guy and I get on first and go to the back and sit down Jeff gets on last with this guy and goes, hi, I'm Jeff, the guitar player, and this is our new singer. That's how they told me. Oh, they, they didn't have the guts to, or professional respect to at least tell me, hey. Yeah, professional respect uh, is uh, exactly the So he lasted about four months. And I got a call. I thought it was like midnight because I just went to sleep, I thought. But it was like six in the morning. And, hey, Matt. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you know. If, oh, hey, buddy. Now it's hey, buddy. If anything starts out with hey, buddy, it's either a cop or it's not going to be trustable. So he goes, you want to do a gig with us? And I go, what happened? Well, our singer, didn't. he decided not to show up. And so we got to play in California. So, okay, if you rent me a car, I'll do it. So they rent me a car. We go down to some little town on the coast, and I got them weed. It was, humble, it was in Humboldt County. So, you know, I, I'm, I was a road manager. I booked the shows. I did everything. So I got the band, like, you know, two ounces of weed, the Brodies, and uh, did a gig. Went home, said, well, you're back in the band now, and now, you know, we'll start working on the album number three. And they even played, we even played some Dr. Mastermind songs on the set. So I was playing with them all summer, and I called the manager for some reason, Ken Bendick, and he, uh, he goes, why are you in the band? I go, well, they said I'm back in. He goes, no, we got another singer. And I had gotten all these calls from the publicity people and said, hey, I thought you were in the band. They go, well, I am. They go, well, I just got a release. It says this guy is joining the band. I, go, I call him up. He goes, yeah, that's okay. That's what's going on. I called everybody in the band and the road crew. They all said, oh, no. We had a gig on Friday, Dean's birthday. So my friend, Harry Boner, he used to play in uh, the Imperial Pigs right before Poison Idea. He said, Dude, and he's Swiss, so in this weird voice, he goes, dude, what you should do is show up like everything's okay, go on stage when they have all the fog, and then leave. So that, would be, that would have been brilliant. I go, I got a better idea. We'll have, I'll get in as many people as I can on the guest list, then I will go, thank you, good night, and leave, and take off, 
and meet you back at the villa and we'll party. And you guys wait for about 20 minutes and then go back and demand your money back. We made $140 in refunds from people who didn't pay. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That was, that was brilliant. Yeah, I thought, bingo. So I'm running up the bus mall to our parked car that we stashed, and I've got the Dr. Mastermind shoulder spikes, and <laughs> people are going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> the aliens have arrived. <laughs> yes, silly home. You know, for, years, for years, I had no idea that was you. I thought it was just some dude. No, I am just some dude. I made the costume. Well, you know what I mean, but I already knew who you were from the wild dog. I'm going to fucking I'm part of the breed. Ruben tells me, I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Part of, the, part of the deal was you can't use your name. He was trying to do like a King Diamond thing, Mike Martin was. So yeah. I, I made that costume by hand. I did. I don't know how to sew. Wow. I made it, put all the studs in. I made the, the spikes. And, and the, another guy saw my spikes and said... Hey, I'm a shop teacher. I'll make it a class project for the kids to make your spikes. And so he did. And that's the good looking ones are the ones they made. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? You look better than anyone in the back of that Wild Dogs album as Dr. Master, right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. It was the band before that, Evil Genius, we all wore the same Elvira wig, saying we were making fun of glam guys. Yeah, yeah, no, I got that just of that. And that I didn't get. That's on YouTube. I had two guitar players. One guy that had he played in the Mentors and Kip Dorn, who played a lot like Michael Schenker. So I had double wow. leads on it, and so I had to rewrite the lead parts because Mike said, well, those guys are good, but, you know, we can have, you know, I've got a lot of world-class guitar players. And I go, how about Ingve? He said, I'll call him. So he, he called Ingve because me and Ingve were like friends. And I, been, I, cool. I told when he heard Ingve, I said, you got to get that guy. He would play me demos over the phone. Mike would. Now you, that's the guy. you got to get him here. And so I became friends with Ingve on the phone when he moved to Mike's house. And so I, I seen Ingve and the sound checks on the Ingve shows are awesome. He plays everything. He yeah, I play, I've heard him play blues where it just makes you just, uh, it's just, it's not fast. It's slow. And yeah, he's, I've never seen him without a guitar, but he was busy with Rising Force, I think. So for like a year. So he took, hooked me up with Paul Gilbert. And Paul Gilbert was still in Pennsylvania and in like 16 years old and a little too dry for me. And he's got a good sense of humor. But um, back then, I was a little more wild. And so he said, how about yeah. the guy that re replaced Ingve and Sealer? He's just like Ingve. And Kurt he James, did. he turns out to be his parents. His mom lived in Vancouver, which is about 20 minutes away from my house. So it, he just, and he's an only child like me. And it worked out. So he was That's getting. All, dude. He, he's another. Wow. A monster. He's a monster. Mike Barney said, see if, see if you can get Dean. And I said, if I can get Dean, can you get him studio work as he's rotting away here? The band's paying him like, you know, half a gram of weed a week. Jesus Christ. He needs Dude. money. <laughs> yeah. And so we put money into the budget so he could move down to the Bay Area. He joined Tony McAlpine's band, and he played on session work. That's how he got found by Neil Sean, who was practicing across the hallway. Okay. And the rest, uh -huh. you know, was a <laughs> mass made in heaven. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> You know, I quit drinking a lot of half my friends. My yeah, that's, the way, that's the way that was. I quit. I started again. I need to quit again. My double vision cleared up. You walked on my friends line. My dub, my, I quit drinking. I lost half my friends. Boom, boom. My double vision cleared up. Well, that's good. Yeah, because you lost it. <laughs> ah, it sinks in. You, you I are. I didn't get it the first time. Yeah. Oh, man. The, the vision, the math was hard for me, too. But, um, so you got a new album out, Anger. Do What's the name of the title? Have you? Got a title the album is called what we um, pretty much 
had to be. We, we, we decided to do this. We're all old men. Half of us are fucked up. So we said, damn, we must have some type of tenacity. So the album's called Tenacity. Okay. Yeah, because you know? the, the clock scene, we better get off before they cut us off here. And uh, yeah. so I want to thank you guys for coming on to tell me sure, about I want to thank you for having me. Like I told yeah, you from the beginning, I'm a big you. fan. Big it's fan. really nice to talk to you finally after all these years. It's been, it's like, been like, years. Like, yeah, it's been a lot of years. Thank you for having us. You got to look out for the album. It will probably drop in like May. So we're finishing the finishing touches. Thank you for having me. Thank you for enduring all my Mike Barney shrapnel fucking questions. No problem. And I'll be on here whenever you want with my brother. Okay, I'll have you back. And nice to meet you too, Gene. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. See you later. All right, take care, man. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.